Hi, my name is Jeff Noble, and my job is to travel the world to teach people about fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. I got interested in fetal alcohol after struggling as a foster parent to a young man on the spectrum. After learning how difficult this disability is, I've made it my life's mission to educate others. To help people understand that individuals with fetal alcohol and their families aren't bad, they're just misunderstood. So I'm using the show to share their stories in hopes, in the end, you'll come away with education, inspiration, and understanding. Welcome to Making Sense of FASD. Hey everybody, this is Jeff Noble. Welcome to episode one of the FASD. One more time. Hey everybody, welcome to the very first episode of Making Sense of FASD. I'm your host, Jeff Noble. I am so glad you guys are here. This has been a lot of hard work uh, by a lot of people, and I'm super thankful that I'm able to do this for you guys. You see, uh, if you don't know me, again, my name is Jeff Noble. If you can't tell, uh, not only am I a shameless promoter, but since 2012, I've been traveling all over the world teaching and training people about fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Uh, if you're not aware, FASD is the leading cause of developmental disabilities on the planet. Anywhere there's alcohol, there is fetal alcohol. And along my journeys, I have talked to frontline workers, caregivers, professionals. And what I've come to realize is there's a lot of misinformation. Not only misinformation, but there's not a lot of information out there to begin with. Not a lot of people are educated. And so what's happening is everybody is becoming frustrated and nobody knows what to do because the information isn't in the right hands. And so that is my job. I go into communities and I teach and train people about fetal alcohol. Now, I didn't always have this awesome job and the opportunity to, uh, to travel and to speak. Uh, I actually come from some very humble beginnings. You see, uh, the way I got my start is I became a foster parent to a young man uh, with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. And to be honest with you, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Uh, it was extremely challenging because I didn't know. Uh, I, I, not only was I not a parent before, uh, but I never you know, raised someone with a, a disability before. And that's when I got my real education about what this was like and how tough it was. Uh, it was so tough, in fact, that, you know, even uh, my wife, uh, who was my girlfriend at the time, uh, she even moved out of our place. And so there was misinformation. I was frustrated. He was frustrated. And luckily, I was able to get some great education. And during that time I got some education, I realized, uh, you know, how prevalent this disability really is and how many people are just struggling with it. So what I wanted to do is to create this show and to share with you not only the things I've learned, but to have in-depth conversations with the real experts, right? Because you got to understand something. Uh, you know, let me, I should have got this right out of the way. I am not a doctor. I am not a lawyer. I am not a social worker, right? So please take what I say uh, with a grain of salt. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to talk to the real experts, the you know the people who are um, living on the spectrum, but also who are doing the research, who are in the advocacy field, people who are doing some really good work. Because often as caregivers, you know, we we feel alone um, in in our journey. Uh, but having been everywhere, I can see that there's a lot of awesome people doing a lot of great things, and I just want to share that with you guys. Uh, What's not a better way to figure out how to deal with this than to get real life examples of real humans, not only living with it, but working in the field every single day. Uh, because maybe, just maybe you hear something or you pick something up that you're able to apply in your own life. Uh, because at the end of the day, my goal is to teach people that, you know, uh, Individuals with fetal alcohol aren't bad. They're just they're just misunderstood, and not only the uh, the individuals, but the family that takes care of them as well. And so my job is to normalize this disability and let you know that there's millions of people around the world who are dealing with it, uh, and some are dealing with it uh, more effectively than others. And so what I want to do is focus on people who are, are good, positive stories, uh, because there's a lot of negativity attached to to fetal alcohol. So that's basically what the format of the show is going to be about. Uh, we're going to open with me. I'm going to have a chat with you real quick, and then we're going to go right to our guests because let's be honest, that's who we really want to hear. That's who we want to get the information from. And so for my very first, absolute very first guest, I thought, you know, who am I going to get? Who um, can exude uh, what success looks like on the spectrum? Who will be able to 
you know, come out and just say, this is me and I'm doing well. And so I follow this young man. His name is Kyle Burt. Uh, I follow him on social media. And when he posts, it absolutely brightens my day. Uh, this kid has done a lot of good things. He's an adult. Uh, he's got his own apartment. And so what I did is I interviewed him and I wanted to ask him the questions like, what is working? what is going on behind the scenes. And so hopefully you could find something and get some inspiration from that and maybe duplicate it. Uh, but what we do know is that if you know one person with fetal alcohol, that just means you just know one person. Uh, so that's why I want to have a, a myriad of individuals, uh, both on the spectrum and in the uh, industry, in the arena, um, who are a part of this and to find out what, what are they doing? What is working? What are we finding what's working? Because that's what, what happened with me as a, as a foster parent. Uh, I quickly realized that what I was doing wasn't working and it was awful. It was, you know, when I look back on it, uh, some of the things I did and reacted was, um, you know, no wonder, no, no wonder we were having uh, troubles. And so uh, recognizing that this is really hard to deal with, I wanted to just contribute the, the best way I can. So I, I think this show is going to be it and I'm super excited. So I'm gonna just stop yapping right now. We are gonna get right to the interview. Uh, this is with Kyle. Uh, again, he's an adult on the spectrum, uh, doing well. And so let's go now to my man. Hey, do you think we could do like uh, a transition, like a storybook? I put more dedication in Special Olympics this year than any other year ever. I always prepare myself for the day when the whole world gets to see what I do, what I like to do. And that's what I'm doing now, just to show the world that I'm a 29 year old who has FAS, who was adopted, who's Afri African American. I mean, I had challenges growing up and I still do, but I, I try to face those challenges by doing things I love, like running, singing, dancing, being creative. I'll just do whatever I have to do to get that gold. <laughs> All right. So here we are. We are with uh, Kyle Burt. Kyle, welcome to the show. You are my very first guest. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining me. Thank you very much, Jeff. I'm glad to be here. Well, listen. Uh, the reason why I chose you to be uh, the very first uh, guest on the show is because I follow you on social media, and I just have to say your your zeal for life is infectious. Whether you are living on the spectrum, you know, uh, you're on the spectrum or not, uh, you just seem like a happy-go-lucky guy uh, that has been through some times. And so I just wanted to talk about that a little bit, if you're okay with that. I'm all right with everything. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, <laughs> so you were you were adopted right away because uh, your mom was uh, consuming alcohol during pregnancy. Is that what happened? Yes, that is correct. So your mom had some addictions issues, and you were put into foster care right away. D uh, different foster families until the age of three. I only had one. one. Uh, at three, uh, so until three, and uh, yeah, they were like, like mom and dad to me until the birds picked me up. Um, okay, so the birds picked you up at, at, at three, like at three years old, and then you were adopted. Mm -hmm. Do you have every any memories of that, or were you too young? I remember going to Chuck E. Cheese's and meeting them for the first time. <laughs> so you remember that. I do remember that. Wow, that's awesome. And so and things were were pretty good, right? Like uh normal as business as usual. Like where where mm -hmm. uh you're from Washington, right? I am from Washington, yes. And so you stayed in the Washington area? Mhm. Mm and did you know um that something was different about you when you were younger? I didn't know something was different about me until later on. I knew that I was adopted. I knew that um, I had some difficulties at school, but I 
didn't know that I was different from everybody else. I thought I was just a, a kid. That's all I knew. Mm. Um, I didn't know the, the difference until later in life. So later is in, because when you went through school, uh, you mentioned that you were in half special ed, half regular classes. Yeah. Correct. Uh, did you know that's why you were in the, the different class or you just went where you were told? I just went where I was told and I was a little bit angry because sometimes because I was not with my friends where my friends were and always wondering why am I in all these other classes where all the regular kids were at or I didn't know that they were regular than from what I was. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was always in the special ed classes um, from the normal classes, as you might say. Sure, sure. Neurotypical. But who's who's really mm -hmm. who's really normal, right, Kyle? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so then we'll 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 fast forward. And so a little bit angry about that, but you kept going. And then you talk about uh, when you hit teenage years, when you hit fifteen years old and that's when you said you know it uh you escalated and you were aggressive and things changed yeah now looking back at it because you're 30 some odd years now what do you know what changed what happened at 15 i don't know i just remember that i was out of control and all these hormones were going through my body and I didn't really know how to contain myself. Even my parents didn't really know how to contain me either. They had to bring help in just to have, to contain the Tasmanian devil inside me. I don't know. It was um, a difficult time in my life. And I, I don't look at it as a bad thing. I think as a, a positive thing in my life that I learned from uh, and help me where I'm at today. Going through the, the real tough times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, and so you said hormones contributed to that. Uh, when did you, how old were you when you got the diagnosis? Um, around, I don't know, I was a young age, probably. Um, young age. Okay, so yeah. you're young. You're young. So, but at 15, did anybody tell you, try to explain your disability or bring it up? I already knew about it, I think. Um, but I didn't put two and two together. Um, and I think it was later on in my life where I, I, I thought about it and I said, I think the fetal alcohol syndrome contributed plus puberty contributed. And then the medications I was on contributed because I was on. Uh, so many medications to contain all these behaviors. So there was a lot of factors that went on with uh, those behaviors. Yeah, I believe. But uh, and, and you didn't want to to be like that, right? Like you weren't. No, who does? Who wants to be out of control and and hitting people and 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 putting holes in the walls and things like that? I mean. If I could go back and change it, I would. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And you're right. You're just proving my point. Uh, when I often, when I go around to do trainings, um, uh, my positioning is, you know, there's no kid growing up wanting to hurt somebody else, right? Or, mm -hmm. or, or be me. But it was just, you were just super frustrated and you, you had a hard time expressing it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, and so 15 and then it, it so the, what happened next was typical to uh, a majority, a lot of families, I don't want to say everybody, uh, to a lot of families where you transitioned into a group home because it came to, became too much for your family, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. So you moved into the, the, the group home. Um, you're angry at your parents at first because you thought they put you in there, right? Yes. And so it a little while passed. And then you started to answer their phone calls again and talk to them. Exactly, yeah. Uh huh. And okay. it was a as a. I mean, during those phone calls, it was hard enough for me to actually get through those phone calls because I was still a little bit uptight and angry. But I got through it, and then 
later on in life, I figured that the reason why they put me there was because they loved me and they wanted to take care of me. And if I wasn't in that situation in those group homes, I would be on the street in jail or prison or whatever, because I would have done some crazy stuff. And I can see that now. <laughs> right. Now, talking to you, looking at you, it, one would be tough to suspect that, y- you know, anything was going on. Uh, with the diagnosis of fetal alcohol, what are some of the symptoms that you have? What are some of the things that you struggle with? So, like, a lot of people who who have fetal alcohol syndrome, like, and, like have problems with math. And that's one of the things that I... I have a problem with is math. Um, another problem I have is probably uh, listening. Um, and then if someone tells me something, they have to tell me like multiple times. They do, they can't just tell me one time. Mm-hmm. So I usually have to have them repeat it a few times. And uh, that goes along with work that has to go with along with like family members tell me what I need to do. Uh, my agency that I live with now, um, I need to hear it a few times before I can understand what they're telling me. Now, are you okay with asking a few times? Do people get upset with you? Do you say one more time or do you say it with a smile and people just tell you? No, I usually, if I, oh, you, when they ask me, like again, yeah. Like, they right. tell me again. Yeah, yeah. I actually, um, I'll give you a good example. When I was at work this last Christmas, I, my, my boss told me one thing, and I went out to go and do, it and I didn't understand what he told me, and I was, I was like afraid to go back to him and ask him again. So what I did was I just, like, thought, okay, I'm just gonna try to figure out what he's thinking and. And, and what he told me, but I, I still thought, okay, I'm going to do it incorrectly. So I asked other coworkers and then finally, as soon as I started running around the block a few times, um, not doing the job he told me to do, he comes up to me. He's like, just ask. That's the best thing you can do for, for me. Because if you don't ask, that just makes more work for us. So, Uh. um, and, and it helped me in the long run. Um, and he understands my diagnosis. And uh, yeah, and, we'll get to that. I'm gonna ask you about yeah. work. Like, I know you're so awesome. You're ahead of me. You already know because yeah, you know. So you had troubles. I'm just going back a bit when you were 15, uh, and then you grew up in 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 the group homes. Transitioned into an adult group home. Eight years or so in the adult group home before yeah. the, until graduation. My goodness, man! Like, how did <laughs> How did you keep the faith? How did you, because when you explained what was, you would, it was all about behavior and then you'd have a bunch of good days. Uh, What was I reading in an article that you said you screwed up once in two years and you lost privileges? Exactly. Yeah, correct. And it took me even longer after that, just to get to where I was at a year ago before I moved where I'm at today. And, um, I think it was just the the positiveness in my mind that brought me to the conclusion, like, got to stop screwing up or you're never going to get out. I mean, I know people who haven't even got out even once, but, um, and they've been in there for years and years and years longer than I have. And it's just the simple fact that you've got to put yourself out there and know that you you can do it you can you'll have a positive um solution um you'll have a positive thing going on on the other side if you just can get through this tough time and i got through that (laughs) yeah totally man because okay uh, because what i really want to talk about is your situation right now right like clearly you've made Here you are. Uh, and this is your, uh, I said, where are you living? You said, this is your own apartment, right? Yes. And where are we coming? That's your studio? This is my studio, yes. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I know because you do Facebook Live. makes me laugh and you play too. Yeah. I love it. So how, 
then, so you say you work with an agency and they help you with your apartment. They part, they help me with my finances. They help me with my appointments, things like that. Um, they, I do have somebody, um, in the process of helping me with my work also, uh, called the job coach. Um, uh, and they'll be helping me like 10% of the time, not much. Cause I don't need that much help at work. Cause I've done it all myself. Yeah. Um, so far, uh, it's been a year without a job coach. Um, but yeah, I, my agency pretty much helps me very little some, uh, but I do majority. I do my food. I do my laundry. Um, uh, because I you go to my appointments. Right. What? But uh, I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt. But they, but they do help you with the stuff you struggle with, like math, you said, right? Uh, yes. If I do have a problem with something, yes, I do go to them. And, and, and they make sure that your rent is paid, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. So like the necessities so that you are not on the street, they help you with that? Yes. Okay. Here's my question to you then, because one of the major issues that I hear about from parents, caregivers uh, all over the world is that their kid uh, or young adult or person they love on the spectrum will not accept the help. Like you're, you're a grown man. Um, do you not feel, uh, you know, like clearly you're accepting help, but do you not feel, you, do you know that you need it in order to make it? Um, do I need it? I think I, I, I could do it myself if I, if I tried hard enough, but when it comes to the, like the, the bills and, um, things like that, that has to do with math. Um, I don't even really think I could do it actually. So, you know, that uh, ex accepting help has helped your life. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Was it tough to accept help at first? Yes, because I wanted to do it myself. I wanted to be independent. And I thought, I don't need this person to, to, to like cook for me. I don't need someone to, to, to wipe my butt for me. I don't mean, mm. I don't know. It's just, there's a lot of things that like a person with a disability that I have, like you want to be like everybody else. So to ask for help is going like, down to the ground and, and feeling like you're, I don't know, you're, you're less somebody. than or yeah. you're, or you're weaker, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. But then we learn that it's the opposite, that accepting help allows you to spend more time doing what you like to do, right? Exactly. Yes. And, and Correct, what, yes. Are, what are the things that you like to do? Um, I like to listen to music. I like to drum. Uh, I like to make music. Yeah. Um, and I like to ride my bike, um, hiking, making music, videos. Um, done that a few times. Um, I've seen them. I've seen them. You like lip syncing? <laughs> I love lip syncing. Also, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I've done a few times. I see you go to concerts, right? Yes, concerts. Also, I forgot about that. <laughs> you love doing that, right? Yes. You. You're in pretty good shape, and we. Mm -hmm. And I just want to talk about that because you were involved in Special Olympics. Would mm -hmm. you tell other parents and people um, li uh, with fetal alcohol, other individuals, to to try Special Olympics? Yes, I think it's a great opportunity to get involved with Special Olympics. Um, I had a hard time. I'll tell you a little bit about my start with Special Olympics. When I first started, I actually didn't want to do Special Olympics. I thought I was better than everybody else who actually was involved in it. So, but when I came involved with Special Olympics, with like track and field, bowling, softball, I saw that there were great competitors going up against me. I thought, this is great. This is what I wanted. This is, I thought I was going to be like ahead of everybody else, but everyone's like, everyone has their own talent when it comes to special Olympics and each and every person has their own, uh, category. Um, and I think that if you want to actually be involved with something with that, you love like baseball or softball, track and field, running, bicycling, 
you should get involved with this. This is a great opportunity um, for your kid or your grandchild or your um, uh, 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 whoever uh, to do sports, get active. Yeah, that's for sure. I agree because, you know, you're not always this cheery. That's no human being is. You still get, no. up, you still get upset, right? Mm -hmm, I do. What do you do to help you calm down? I know like, cause we talked about working out was one of them being physical, mm -hmm. but what do you do when you start to get upset? I usually obsess a lot. I obsess a lot and it goes through my head over and over and over again. And I, and what helps me is talking to people, talking to my, the people around me, like my agency, my family, my friends, things like that. So just expressing that you're, you're upset, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, two more questions. So for all of the caregivers that are having a hard time, Maybe they have Kyle Burt at 15 years old, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. they're having a tough time. What would you say to the parents of that kid? Um, it's funny. I've been asked this question before uh, from a, a lots of parents, actually. Um, I think that you don't give up on them. You'll get through it. I think that they're the child is actually hurting inside. They don't know what's going on. Um, and, and don't like, even if you have a make, I have to make a decision of putting them somewhere else. Um, I know the, 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 the response that's going to happen is probably going to be, uh, like rejection from the child to the parents and things like that. But over time, they will understand, hopefully they'll understand that it's all from love and uh, that you care about them and that you want them in a better place. Um, and that's the reason why you want to put them in a, a group home or a uh, someplace that will make them safer than not safe. Because that's, my parents were like, they thought, like I could destroy their whole house. Um, and I didn't want to do that to them at the time. I didn't care, but now I do care of right. what I, I do and what responsibility I have in my life. But, but get, letting the parents know to not give up, even though it might, seem, exactly. even though it might seem out of control. Mm -hmm. and, and, and do you have a good relationship with your parents now? Oh yeah, I do. I see them on a daily basis. They he live here where I, where the city yeah. I live in. And uh, that's the reason why I lived, uh, I came back to the city I'm living in now. I was living somewhere else an hour away from here uh, for uh, 17 years. And um, uh, those were my days where I fully matured. And then once I came back, I was a totally different person. Um, it was funny because my parents um, didn't believe that I could ride my bike around and thought I wouldn't be responsible enough to ride my bike. And then when my parents first saw me ride my bike, like here where I live now, they were a little bit uneasy, very, not very, um, like very scared for me, but then they fully realized and trust me that I could do it myself. And I have been doing it for a year now. Um, so riding a bike, are we talking a bicycle? Bicycle, yeah. I ride it around town. I don't drive, so. So you ride um, a, you ride a bike, and now your parents they trust that you could do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it took yeah. a little bit while because how old are you now? I am thirty three. Um, you don't look a day over twenty. <laughs> <my guy. laughs> Everyone says I'm like twenty, but I'm not. I I'm know. You're, you're a wise soul, though, I tell you what, Kyle. Honestly, uh, this has been great insight. It's, it's important that caregivers and people see that uh, um, individuals with fetal alcohol can have a really great life and they could do good. It just looks different and you might need some help in, in certain areas. Uh, but you have a lot of talents and you can still enjoy life. And I, to me, what it looks like and from talking to you and seeing you that 
you and you enjoy uh, life to the fullest. What I do. What is next? What is your future? What, do you think about the future? Do you have any goals for the future? Um, I think I want to. I don't know. I think I want to actually record music, um, not as a a real job. I just want to do it like as a has a, a great hobby. I mean, yeah. I'm already doing it, but I want to do it more and learn more about it. I did a little school for it at a community college back in another city, but um, uh, I think learning the software, learning how to make beats and things like that, um, singing better also. I mean, I can, uh, I can sing, but I don't think I sing that great. <laughs> um, um, what else do I want to do? Um, explore, explore, look at national parks from Yellowstone to, to um, Mount Rainier. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I want to travel. Yeah, oh, that's the future that I want. That's, that sounds like an awesome future. Before, yeah. we go, before we go, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the fact that you have a job and yeah. that you got a job. Now, was, is this your first job? No, this is my, probably my fifth job in my life. Now, were you let go or did you quit from the other jobs? Uh, I had to quit to come here to move where I'm living now. So it was funny because I, as soon as I found out that I was moving here to this, where the agency I'm living now or this apartment that I'm living now, um, there was a two weeks, it was two weeks in between where, between jobs. So I went from Albertsons to where I'm working now <laughs> in the meat department. So you're now right. You're in the meat department. Do you do, uh, have you ever seen the Rocky movie? I have. And no, we do not have any animals hanging up no, from you're not the ceilings. You're not practicing on the meat. No, and no <laughs> work out at night. Okay. Fair enough. No. Uh, now, you talked about uh, your boss telling you to 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 say uh, to repeat yourself, like to ask the question again. Did he know that uh, you were on the spectrum when you got hired? He did not, and I asked that question to my agency. Like, should I tell them right away? Like, I have this condition, and they're like, No, you don't have to. But for some reason, um, it came up in uh, in a conversation. And I, I think it was really beneficial when he found out. And, um, and I think that, um, I don't, I, I mean, sometimes I feel, I feel like it's really hard to, that I, that he did know, because I feel like I am like, I get special, like special treatment because I, I told him that, but really I'm not getting special treatment. Um, but if he has an understanding of, of what I, I have, he has a better understanding how I work. And I think mm, that's, that's a very, very positive thing. And I think that each and every person who ever has a job who's on the spectrum needs to like, you don't need to tell your boss, like, you on the spectrum. Like, if it needs to be, yes, let them know, because they'll have a better uh, factor on your uh, work mm -hmm. environment and your on your job skills and things like that. Because you might have problems along the way. I know a friend of mine that had problems, and then that person had to go and get diagnosed. And it helped that person so much. Um, um. And that person's gone miles and miles and miles uh, uh, through being diagnosed and very lucky person. Oh, that's, you know, you're lucky. I, I wish I could bottle your enthusiasm for <laughs> life. I'd sell it. Thank I'd you. It, Kyle. Uh, so next up, Vancouver, right? And I think Vancouver. Yes. And we're going to, we're going to meet face to face and you're going to see a lot of people online. And are you excited about that? I am very excited for Vancouver. It will be my second time in Vancouver. I was just there last month. Mm -hmm. um, and beautiful city. 
Um, first time at a conference also for fetal alcohol syndrome. Oh. So really excited to meet a lot of these faces that in my group and meeting you also personally. Oh yeah, we're gonna high five for sure. We'll have to come up yes. with a cool, a cool handshake. <laughs> yeah. cool. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time, my friend. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing your story. It's A, it's not easy, and B, you are going to help a lot of families because people are going to be watching this and say, Kyle could do it. I could do it. I'm not going to give up on my kid uh, because they could turn out awesome like Kyle. So thank you so much. Before we go, what um, where can I send people? Where can people watch what you do and – and what you got. So you can check me out on uh, Instagram at Kyle Burt 85. That's yeah. K Y L E Burt B U R T 85. That's all one word. Mm -hmm. You can check me out on YouTube at Kylie Alberto. That's K Y L I E um, space A L B U R T O. Awesome. Um, I'll put that. I'll and I am on Facebook also. <laughs> I'll put, uh, I'll put your YouTube and your Instagram in the description below. And so if people want to connect with you, because I really think that your zest for life is amazing, dude. And just by watching you, I start to have a better day. Uh, so I encourage people to look you up, uh, YouTube, Instagram, uh, you're the man. And I'll, I'm going to see you, uh, next week. Yes. Next week. Can't wait. What a fantastic interview that was. Kyle Burt, he is an inspirational young man. I can't wait to see what he does in the future. If you want to follow his YouTube channel, the link will be in the description below. Go ahead and, and hit that, uh, and you can see all the, the, the wacky videos he does. Uh, I think it's poignant to, to bring up some of the points that he talked about that I think are, are super valid. Uh, and the first one is, is that when he said he was 15 years old, he really had a, a troubling time, you know, with hormones, medication, not knowing what was going on. And that he expressed himself uh, in an angry manner. And uh, I think if your kids are in that position right now, he said to hang on, you know, don't give up on them. Uh, you can get through it. And I believe it is true uh, at the same time. Uh, this is a classic example of what success looks like when the individual with fetal alcohol, like Kyle, is in the right environment. And he talked about his agency helping uh, him with uh, making sure his rent was paid and that his bills were paid. Uh, and then he was able to take the leftover money and do what he wanted once with it. As you can see, he was making a studio because one of his strengths is he loves to sing and make music. And so he should be able to have the, the opportunity to do that. I hope to meet up with him someday soon and do some uh, some karaoke with him. I am also a horrible singer, so that uh, uh, he's going to make me look bad, but I don't care. I'll give her anyway. So, Kyle, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Here we go. Uh, you know, since this is a show, what I thought we'd do is we'd have some live music. I always see those on late night shows and shows, and that's what I want to do. So I have my best friend in the whole wide world, Colin. And since we're talking about strengths, we're talking about Kyle's strengths. Well, Colin's strength is uh, playing the guitar. So I just wanted to share it with you. We're going to end on that note. Uh, if you want more information, you want to see more episodes and be notified first, uh, then please sign up for our newsletter. Uh, the uh, link is in the description below. I... This is the darkest ones by the tragically hip.
I hope you enjoyed it. So glad you were able to join us. Until next episode, take care of yourselves, keep up the good work, and we'll chat soon.